Have you ever seen this fellow before? Um, if I think I have, uh, he's and kind I of, think, he's kind of impressive. Like it's, right. I, you would and remember said, if you met him before, right? right? I said, think. I, how tall are you? Oh, uh, six six. Uh, yeah, I he's said, six six. How yeah. many six six people do you yeah. meet? Well, you know, Your Honor, uh, there was a six six guy there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> This is the plaintiff, Veronica Ventresca Phillips. She says her gutters were falling off her house, so she hired the defendant to fix and replace them. The defendant subbed the job out to someone else. That guy told her the gutters were fine and all she needed was to fix one hole. The defendant cashed her check for $500 without doing any work. And she's suing the guy here and now to get her money back. This is the defendant, Matthew. He says he sent one of his guys over to the plaintiff's house to repair her gutters. And when he was on the ladder, a squirrel jumped on him, and he got scared and fell off the ladder. He wasn't informed there were squirrel nests on the plaintiff's roof, told the woman to get animal control to remove them. She never did. And he owes nothing. He's accused of not getting the job done. All parties, please get your ready. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Yana. All right, Ms. Ventresca Phillips, you are suing Mr. Matthew. You've asked to be referred to only by your first name. For $500 that was paid to uh, Mr. Matthew in order to do a gutter job that he never did. Tell me what's going on. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, on uh, May the 26, 2022, I um, got in touch with Angie Liss and uh, asked for, you know, a contractor that can help me with uh, my roof. Now, Angie's List, for those who don't know, is, a, is an online tool to uh, obtain contractors for projects around the house and um, perhaps elsewhere, I don't know. Yes, ma'am, uh -huh. exactly. And uh, the same day, uh, Mr. Matthew called me. Uh, this is not the guy I was really dealing with. Uh, I was dealing with, uh, I guess, his brother. I'm not sure what's going on. Have you ever seen on. this fellow before? Um, if I think I have, uh, he's and kind I say of, think. He's kind of impressive. Like it's, right. I, You would and remember said, if you met him before, right? right? I said think. I, how tall are you? 6'6". Uh, six, six. Uh, yeah, I he's 6'6". Six, six. How yeah. many 6'6 six, six people do you yeah. meet? Well, you know, Your Honor, uh, there was a 6'6 six, six guy there. Okay. <laughs> okay. That didn't really speak a lot and didn't okay, really Okay, so say you anything. dealt more with the brother. Yes, I did. Right. And you and were I, there with I your brother assume... originally, right? Yeah, it's my company, but uh, right. we both sold jobs, so... Yeah. So what happens? You hire them so, to do what? Yes, ma'am. I did hire them to uh, fix my gutter. Okay, and but so and why did they... you think your gutters needed to be fixed? Because the winter before, um, there was a storm, ice storm in Chicago, and my gutter got a lot of buildup of ice on it, and so it leaned. It okay. had a leaning to it. Okay. And so uh, I figured, you know, let me get it done before, you know, the winter come again. And so I did call them, and, and they called me right away. And so I was kind of surprised. So they by go them. out there, they sell you the job. How much is it going to cost to have your gut? Are you redoing all the gutters or some of them? Just one. On okay, the south and side it's going to cost street. you how much? They and say they total price that I negotiated with them because they were higher, twelve hundred dollars. Total price I negotiated with them was one thousand and fifty dollars. All right, and they asked for a five hundred dollar deposit. Uh, yes, they did. All right, and then do they come out to do the job? No, ma'am. They never showed up. Who shows up instead? Somebody that they sent? 
Yes, ma'am. So uh, how, how much sent. later does that somebody come? June the 4th. Okay, so June the 4th, you say in your complaint that it was uh, subcontracted. Why do you say that? Uh, because uh, subcontracted because the gentleman that came out said he had been doing uh, gutter business for over 30 years and that he had his own company. And so definitely gave me the assumption to subcontract okay. out. Okay, and was it subcontracted out, the job? Yeah. Okay, so that person goes, and uh, and that's okay. That unless your contract specifically doesn't allow them to do that, a person can subcontract. Now they're still on the hook, and they've got to make sure it's done right because they have to stand behind the work. Now, when they had come, did they go, uh, get up on the roof or no? No, ma'am. Okay, so they gave their quote from the ground. Yes, ma'am. All right, so then go on. And so the contractor, when I got there. Uh, introduced myself to the contractor. He did get his ladder from his truck and he did go up on the roof. And when he went up on that roof and he looked at my gutter and he looked at it very thoroughly, he looked at my gutter and he came down and of course, and he told me, he said, Veronica, I'm, I, I don't know what's going on, but you don't need a gutter. I've been doing this for over 30 years. You don't need a gutter. What they need to come out here, Matthew and them need to come out here and do is fix that hole that, you know, maybe squirrels has been digging in. Why okay. would he fix a hole that squirrels were digging in? Well, a hole I mean, where? A hole where? In my roof. Yeah, but he's not a roofer. He was there to do gutters. Uh, well, I assume they were And what roofers. happened with the squirrel? Did a squirrel come out and jump no, on the guy? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Cross okay. my heart. No, ma'am. I was so surprised to even hear that in the introduction. No, ma'am. Okay, so he tells you, you have squirrels. There's a hole in your uh, roof. I didn't have squirrels. What'd I don't you have, have squirrels. What'd uh, you have? I, I, there was a hole there. Okay, uh -huh. and I guess, but I don't have squirrels in my roof. That's what okay. I'm saying to you. So, but I don't understand. It, what does the hole have to do with the gutter hanging down? You had said uh, that the nothing, gutter was hanging nothing, down. Nothing, nothing, but this is, he said, all they need to do is come out and fix that hole, and they are okay. capable it's of doing it. It's not his job to fix a hole in your well, roof, then that but it is his job to me. fix the gutters that were leaning down. You yes, said the gutters were leaning down. Yes, ma'am, and that would have been fine with me. Okay. And they didn't have to come and fix so that hole. So why did you guys not go back? Well, when, when we got a phone call from the worker that went out there, uh, he explained to us that the squirrel uh, jumped on him after he went and inspected the gutter. And supposedly there's like a squirrel nest between the gutter and the, there's like a tree right by the corner of the gutters. And one of the squirrels jumped on him and supposedly he fell off the ladder. So he just he did fell it. off the ladder? Yeah, I mean. I think we'd know if he fell off the ladder because there would be a hospital stay, right? I mean, it wasn't really that much of a big How, Did height. he tell you he fell off the ladder? Uh, he said he was trying to get down and he fell off the ladder, yeah. He said that. Where is he? Is he here to testify? No, Your Honor, no. I, do I, you have an affidavit from him? I do not. Um, can you call him on the phone so I can hear his side? Oh, uh, sure. Your Honor, if I could say. Yeah, go ahead. While he's trying to get the person on uh, the phone. Yes, ma'am. My friend John was there the whole time that that gentleman. Yes, John said, here is. You got him in your pocketbook. Uh, I do have. I do have a uh, test. Uh, a An witness affidavit. Statement. Go ahead. Yes, you can show it to me. Go ahead. And... Hey, um, I'm in court right now. Uh, you're on speaker. Here. Hi. This is Judge Marilyn Milian from the People's Court. Yes. All right, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sure. Okay, what's your name? Eric. Okay, Eric, how long have you been in the business? Uh, over 20 years. Okay, and what's your relationship with Matthew? Uh, subcontractor. Okay, uh, Eric, um, I'm gonna need you to raise your right hand and I'm gonna trust that you're doing it because I can't see you and do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, tell me what happened when you got to the lady's house. So I, I took out the ladder, went up there, there was a a hole in between the gutter, where the gutter is screwed into the fascia board. So there's a hole in the fascia board? Right. Okay, go on. Uh, so I put the ladder there and a, a, a squirrel came out of there. And what happened? Um, well, I kind of tripped on the ladder um, and I told I told the, the customer that before I go and do anything with the, with the gutters that she has to have uh, somebody come out and take care of the, uh, the, you know, the problem with the squirrel. Okay. And how would a homeowner take care of that? Um, well, I would think she would get some kind of uh, animal 
animal controls because they, they must have been a nest or something that they're going, going in and out of there. Okay, so is the reason that you left the house because of that? Yes. All right, and was the gutter hanging? Yes. So the gutter needs repair as well, right? Right. So, so, the, so the nest has to be removed, the hole has to be patched, and the gutter needs to be resecured. Right. Okay, thank you, Eric. Okay. You're Adios. Welcome. All right, so he says he told you that, you know, he, he can't work uh, there until you take care of it. I know he did, right? Didn't they tell you, you got to take care of this squirrel? Uh, just, I, um, I deep breathe because everything that was just told was not true. But so it I kind of is because you told me it was. You told I, me there that there's a, a hole, hole in between here and, and there, uh, and and the hole has to be patched for sure. But that's not their job. Yes, Your Honor, I went further. Um, I definitely did. Um, I do have a, a gentleman that repaired my roof for me, and paid the, him. The, repaired what? The fascia that board. Hole, the fascia. Yeah. Lift up okay. The gutter. And right. We certainly could call him. Right, and, but I, I believe you. So somebody yeah. repaired that, and then did that same person repair the gutter? Uh, yes, he just put nails in there because that's all it was need. But okay. he could certainly tell you that everything. And what did he charge you? Four hundred dollars. Okay. Everything that they just said, even I'm just I'm so surprised. I didn't expect this, but everything they just said is just not true. And if you call my friend John, certainly he was there the whole time, and we could know. He knows that that gentleman did not fall off the ladder or tumble over the ladder. And he, yeah, I, I'm not. There's no. You know, there's no that. lawsuit against you for falling off a ladder yeah, or anything like that. Yeah. First of all, I don't know how that would be your fault anyway. He's yeah. an independent contractor on his own. If he slips, he slips, and it's not your fault that there's a squirrel. And they did not tell me. He did not say it all. He told me that he was not. That the only thing. Nothing it's not wrong. the only thing. It's a thing that needs a to be thing, fixed. A thing and then, that needs and to then be fixed. And then that thing that's hanging had to be reattached. Yeah. What I don't get is why, you know, like, why didn't you and your brother, when you're estimating the job, get up on a ladder to see what the deal was up in the fascia board? Uh, so my brother, he's been selling gutters for a very long time. And he, like, he, he doesn't really have to go up the ladder to see from it. Well, apparently he does, because the reason that the gutter was falling was the squirrel nest, right? Well, yeah, that we knew later, but... Uh, right, exactly. We'd know earlier if we, you know. Yeah. So, but what happens now? She's, she's $500 into it. You don't want to go back, and I understand that, but why does she lose her whole $500? The material is bought with the deposit, and... Uh, when it, when right, it, but you, in your st answer to the complaint, you say, we forfeited the job. What does that mean? Uh, we forfeited the job because she didn't want to get rid of the squirrels. Now, so we... Okay, so let's go backwards, and you tell me, how do you know she didn't want to get rid of the squirrel's nest? Uh, my brother got in contact with her. Who did? My brother. So it's hearsay. You didn't get, you're not the one who spoke with her. It's like between, when, when we sold jobs, we go back and forth with customers. Yeah. That's fine. So your brother tells you yeah. that he got in contact with her, and that what? Uh, she just didn't want to get rid of the squirrel nest. Did anybody call you to get rid of the squirrel's nest on your own? You know. Yes or no? No. Okay, but you, what, would you think that it's their job to get rid of the squirrel's nest? No. Well, then, you, I think you do, because you said all they had to do was patch up the, the hole no. but from the squirrel's nest. Why would that be their no, job? No, Miss Millian. I didn't have Judge squirrels. Judge Millian. Judge, Your Honor, I did not have squirrels okay. up there. Honest to God, I, I thought didn't. you said that you had a hole. I do. I did. I did have a hole, but I did not have squirrels living in my. Nobody's asking you whether you had them oh, living there. You had a nest, and the nest was growing, I and the nest was. I did not have a nest up there. What'd you have? What? What? What's a hole from? I did not have a nest. What up there. is the hole from? The hole is from squirrels, I guess. Okay. In now it. here's my question. I need you to listen very carefully, to my question. Yes, ma'am. Did they say to you, "You have squirrels, and you need to get animal control to take no, care of"? No, ma'am. So how is it that they don't come back and fix the thing? I guess they really judged your honor, and I got a lot of test messages and everything like that. Your honor asking them to come back, asking them to fix that roof, and I got more than one witness stand, and I asked them, your honor, please, I said, I don't understand why you're not coming back. Please. And what would they say? Oh, we'll be there. Oh, nothing. Did, Did they, they ever say knowing? anything about the squirrels? No, ma'am. Never, 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 never. Nobody, not even that other gentleman. No, ma'am.
Never. Where's your text messages? Yes, ma'am, right here. And even Angie List tried to get in touch with them, Your Honor. Angie List, Better Business Bureau. So if they really wanted to take care of the problem, they really could have. There was never a mention about anything like that. Hello, I was told that you was going to call me between 4 and 5 o'clock to discuss with me what we are going to do about the hole in my roof by my gutter. And also, I need to know exactly how much it's going to cost. We have $500 down and you really concerned me because you do not return phone calls. And you do not let me know after your gutter guy has have talked to you what is going to happen. So I really do appreciate a call back. That is on... Thursday, June 9th, then on June 15th, hi, trying to confirm the date and time that you guys are going to come and repair my hole and buy my gutter. Then again, on June 18th, we have been trying to reach you for our repair work. You're not responding. We don't understand. We trusted in you and your company. If you're going to do the work, please let us know. Thank you. Then on June 27th, since you have made the decision not to do any work on my roof, I'd like to get my money back. And you, you guys just don't answer anything. Why? Uh, Your Honor, I... I, I do understand that uh, she did send out text messages, but uh, um, we get a lot of text messages and emails every day. We try to respond to as much as people as possible. No. Oh. No. You have a contract with someone, and you don't get to blow them off. If you have a contract with someone, then you have to respond and say, this is what we need. If you're telling me that the reason you didn't go back there is because she refused to take care of the squirrel problem, I want to see that in the text. Because I don't see that. What I see is her repeatedly calling you over and over, trying to get you out there, and you completely ignoring your customer. Well, that was after the, the situation. Yeah, thinking. prove it. Aside from that, you don't get to just keep the $500, and then uh, the exact words, because I loved when I read this. It was just amazing to me. We forfeited the job. That sounds like you decided that you weren't going to keep going. But you don't get to decide that and keep the money. If you don't want to go there, that's great. I don't want to go there, it's dangerous, uh, I don't like her, she's a pain. Whatever you want, but you give back the money. You don't get to decide that on your own and then also not give back the money and then also not call her back and then say we do our best. No, no, you don't get to do that. You don't get to just leave a customer hanging. $500, verdict for the plaintiff. Both sides, hold on, please. So really no question about the outcome of this case. The plaintiff prevails. She's going to get her $500 back. Matthew, you heard what the judge said. Don't you feel kind of silly? Yeah, it's more of like a back and forth type of game, you know. There's two sides of it, and clearly um, I lost, so. Yeah, the judge just didn't believe what you and, and the judge said you can't forfeit a job. If you forfeit a job, you've got to give the money back. No question. Yeah, correct, but we bought the material ready for the job, so it came out of basically her money. Yeah, but you didn't do the job. But you didn't do the job. Correct, because of the squirrel loss. So that's your problem. Yeah. Well, I hope you learn. Exit on the left. Goodbye. Now, here comes the plaintiff now on her way out of the courtroom. Boy, I think everybody feels sorry for you. Um, you're yes. going to get your money back finally. Thank you. Yes, I do right? appreciate that. Thank God. And did the people who repair it say anything about finding squirrels? No, sir. No, sir. Not at all. <laughs> uh, the first time I heard of squirrels is today in court. That's the first time. Really? Yes, sir, it is. First time ever. Yes, sir, it is. All right. I'm glad you got it fixed. Thank glad you. you prevailed in court. Glad you're getting your $500 back. Yeah. And uh, have a good day. Well, Doug, in this case, the judge simply said, look, uh, it is not reasonable the amount of time that was delayed here in doing the job. Now, if you want to protect yourself, here's what you do. You either put in a date certain that the job has to be done by a date certain, or at least that gives a frame of reference. But even better, put in that date certain and then write the magic words. Time is of the essence. That is a legal trigger, which means it's got to be done by then. Marilyn, who do you call the most on your phone, on your cell phone? You. Without a doubt, right? Yeah. yeah. I got to say, <laughs> it's the same. I, I call you more than anybody else, but I do get a lot of calls from people who are concerned about whether I'm saving a lot of money on my long distance or on my, yeah, cable, there's, yeah, on my exactly. cable. And that, you know, and I appreciate the, their thoughts. <laughs> and I, 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 
they care about me, obviously. <laughs> but I'm, I'm doing your call is very them. important to them. Exactly, your call is important to us. But you used to call your mom constantly. A lot. And my mom is going to turn 97 this month, right? And, um, so it's not quite as sharp not, on the phone no, as she used to. Be, right, 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 right. But but yeah, but even then, I'm sure right. my mother might have called me more than you called me. But right. you and I speak like right. I mean, even in our busiest times of our lives, we would speak. Right. I would say two or three times a day. Yeah. And now, yeah. Um, well, you're usually right there, so I don't have to yeah. call you, but because you're there at home, Constantly. and you're there at work. And Isn't it you're, great? You're, it's magical. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to call you as much, but I think you're still probably the person I call the most. I'm sure. This is the plaintiff, Bethan Ward. She says the defendant is her ex-boyfriend, and she foolishly co-signed on a car loan for him, and also gave him the down payment money because he has terrible credit. She realizes now this was a dumb thing to do because she can't get him to pay her back, and she can't get her name off the car loan now that they've broken up. She's suing for $3,000, the amount she's out. This is the defendant, Kyle Taylor. He says he was dating the plaintiff and his now current wife at the same time in 2020. The plaintiff was having a relationship with his girlfriend at the time, and they were involved in a three-person relationship. Everyone contributed to the relationship. The plaintiff gave him $3,000 with no discussion of it being a loan, so he owes nothing. He's accused of being in a love triangle. All parties, please get your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that the defendant and her ex-boyfriend stiffed her on a car loan and she wants her money back. But the defendant says that he and the plaintiff were involved in a three-way relationship with another girl and they all contributed money so they're even Steven. It's the case of managing a menage. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, yeah. Okay, Ms. Ward, what's going on? Hello. Uh, so... I'm currently here because my ex-boyfriend, Kyle Taylor, uh, we had signed off on a Jeep together in October of 2020. Um, when we were together, we were together for six months. And at the time, we were in a relationship with another person. And he was moving to Maine okay, from hold on. Jacksonville. Okay, hold on. Break and tell, explain to me what you're saying. Sorry. So as of October of 2020, uh -huh. I was in a relationship with Kyle Taylor. Yes, and that part girl. I got. And, and another girl, and the other girl is what to Kyle Taylor? Is now his wife. And was also his girlfriend at the time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So in October of 2020, how long had you been dating? About six months. And how long had you been dating your mutual other girlfriend that is now his wife? The same time, six Same months. amount of time. How did y'all, yes, like, meet each other in order to... I'm just curious because it's unusual, so I'm fascinated. Right. How, 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 did, yeah. how, does, how does one find out that the other person is into this? Like, how did, how did that, how, what happened? How, how'd that go? So I met Tiffany first, the, okay. his now wife. Um, I met her through some mutual friends in a group that we had in Jacksonville. Um, and then in March, that's when COVID happened and everything shut down. She introduced me to Kyle so that we could play video games together. And we just kind of started talking, and he had mentioned that um, him and Tiffany had always wanted another girlfriend. And I was like, okay. And, I, you know, I'd thought about it, never really considered it. And then I met up with all of them together. Okay. And we just kind of all agreed to start dating. Well, this is the most interesting use of COVID, I, uh, of the free time that COVID gives one that I've heard up to date. By October, everyone's dating everyone for six months. And then, and then what happens? And then it gets to the point where... Um, Kyle gets a job in Maine. He gets a job opportunity in Maine. And we find out that he needs to move to Maine. And he what, does Kyle, Camaro. what does Kyle do? Um, he was a manager at Walmart. Okay. So he's getting a job in Maine at Walmart? Yes, as okay. a manager. Got it. Go on. And so he had a Camaro at the time. And we, he said that because it snows up there, he wanted a vehicle that wouldn't get stuck in the snow. So he said he wanted to go and trade in his Camaro for a Jeep. Um, he had mentioned to me at the time that because I had really good credit and his credit wasn't great. He said it would be beneficial if I signed off on a vehicle with him. Beneficial for whom? 
for him to be able to have easier payments and for the, you know, when you sign off on a vehicle and you have good credit, you get a better deal when right, you purchase right. a vehicle. Except for that he isn't buying a hoopty that'll do him in the snow, is he? He's buying a $50,000 Jeep. So yes. better for whom? Just him. I, what was it going to do for yeah. you? What is wrong with you? And at the time, I thought that it would be beneficial for both of us because I've never signed off on a vehicle before. Oh. I've never owned my own vehicle. Oh, And oh, oh. I asked him about it. Right. And he said, yeah, this will be good for us. And you thought it would be good for you. How? Because I thought at some point I would think about moving to Maine with him because we were going to be together forever. And what was going to happen with the other girl? She was going to move up with us. And everybody was just going to be hunky dory and nobody was ever going to, to there was never going to be a problem but in this arrangement. That's what you thought. Right. Right. That's what I, that's what we were hoping on when I signed off on it. Yes. Really? Okay. So yeah. keep talking. Okay. So I signed off on this vehicle when it came down to, to paying for the down payment. We had agreed that he was. We were going to put a t joint together of four thousand dollars down. I had an open credit card that had a seven thousand dollar limit, so I said, "Okay." Oh, we can't have uh, that. I we got to make sure to use up the whole limit. All right, go ahead. So, so I said, "I'll put three thousand down," and he had a thousand dollars, so he put a thousand dollars. Why down. doesn't he just put all the money down if it's his car? Because he didn't have four thousand dollars to put down. Oh well, maybe he shouldn't be buying a fifty thousand dollar car. Right. Um, so and that didn't occur to you? Not at all. Not at, at all. Time, like I said. Not at it, all. It, well, it, how much does the new car have to cost for, it, for you to say, whoa, if you don't have a down payment, why are you buying a car this expensive? Honestly, at the time, I didn't. I didn't because you've never broken up with anybody in your life and you didn't know that some relationships break up? I didn't know that. You weren't planning how, ahead how this one might yeah. break up? I mean, I didn't know how the that two this was how going. two out of three might might end up together and and squeeze the third one out. Yeah, I didn't know the responsibilities that came with signing well, off what on did a you, vehicle. I'm with sorry, just a second, because the document you signed says what happens, and you're not a Cretan. You know that in fact you are signing and therefore adopting responsibility for it. You know when you did it that it meant that your credit is going to go in the toilet because. Answer me this. How does a person get bad credit? As far as I know, you get bad credit from having debts that you owe. And that and you don't of credit pay. Checks. Correct. That you don't pay, right? So you right. put your name on a vehicle with him that you expect him to pay, right? Right. How'd that work out for you, darling? Not great, apparently. Right, because here's a, in a shocking turn of events, what did he do? He, well, we got in arguments after arguments and I broke up with him. And he isn't paying. Right. Who saw that coming? I guess not me. Yeah, not you. Mr. Taylor, what's going on? Hello. Um, so we, at the beginning, we were talking about getting a different car because of the snow. Well, no, 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 no. Back it up. So you're dating, what's this third party's name? First name only. Tiffany. So you're dating Tiffany, and you become friends with Bethan? Correct. And then you and Tiffany decide that you want to spice up things because, you know, you need more than what you got. And so you bring Bethan into the quotient? In layman's terms, yes. Oh, well, no, no, no. I want to know the professional <laughs> terms. What would be the other different um, terms? We, we all thought that we all had a mutual... Uh, feelings for each other and decided that's how we wanted to go with it. I bet you did, cowboy. And then what happens? Um, we were good for a while until, I guess, uh, Thanksgiving's really when it all started going downhill. How did it go downhill? Um, I wasn't with her on Thanksgiving. With who? But, I can't keep uh, it straight. Either, either one of them. Okay. They were together on Thanksgiving. Um, okay. And apparently so was Bethan's new boyfriend. Okay. Hold on a second. So while the three of you are in a threesome, Bethan gets a new boyfriend? That's what it seemed like to everyone involved. But she denies it. She denied that it started then. But okay. But as last thing I knew, they were still together now. Okay. So then what happens? Um, 
she broke up with me in December. And then um, she proposed to my now wife in, I think, November. Okay. And then uh, they broke up in January. <laughs> and when do you uh, get Bethan to do your bidding on your $50,000 brand new Jeep? The vehicle was purchased in October. What exactly okay. did she put down on the car? Um, $3,000. Were you supposed to pay her back? It was never discussed that I was supposed to pay her back. At the time, we were uh, together in a relationship, and it was something that was better for all of us. How was it going to be better for everybody, for you to have a $50,000 Jeep in another state? I know it would be better for you, but how is it going to be better for everybody? So we were looking uh, together before that one was picked. And then since we were going to be together, it was better to get a vehicle that was better. They were going to come up Oh, there, by the way, when I say the two of them, Tiffany forked over how much for the Jeep? Nothing. Oh, how come? Uh, she actually didn't know that we went and got the Jeep. What, what did Tiffany say when you showed up with a brand new Jeep? Where'd you get a Jeep? <laughs> and what did you say? Uh, I told her the dealership. <laughs> yeah. You still didn't tell her, so you were obviously keeping from her that Ms. Ward had helped you to purchase it. Why were you keeping it from Tiffany? Uh, so there was, uh, I guess, a, a power struggle between the two of them. Oh. And I didn't want it to escalate. Which didn't I see that escalated. coming, did we? <laughs> a power struggle for what? Over you? Yeah. Hmm. So she puts down $3,000 for the down payment. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you a question, Mr. Taylor. Are you making the payments on the Jeep that, I, I guess they put it in both of your names, Ms. Ward? Yes, ma'am. And so are you making the payments, Mr. Taylor? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, how far behind are you? I'm not. Okay, because you were, right? I had one that uh, had to be put at the end because of my job, but now it's- I don't know what you're saying. I'm you missed a payment, is that what you're trying to say? You missed I one payment? Have. I would have missed one. Well, why was she I getting all these notices? You make it sound like you took care of things in advance, but it sounds to me like you took care of things when she blew up because she was getting notices, right? I think the notices were because of uh, the date that the payments were due. Sometimes it would be uh, half, it wouldn't be late, but it would have to be not on the date. Ms. Ward, how did you find out that he was behind on payments? In April, I got the email from Wells Fargo stating that he had missed a payment and he owed two months of payment. It was the month that he missed March in, current, and April. in the current month. Yeah. Correct. So I texted both of them and said, just so you know, both I received of them. an email. Who's the other one? Kyle and Tiffany. When did you break up with Tiffany? I broke up with Tiffany with January of 2021. Okay. Did you invite Tiffany to join you and whatever other fellow you were with? No, and I was not dating... Clayton is his name. I was not dating him until January of 2021. Okay. And is he into this stuff too or no? No, not at all. Okay. So why Tiffany? Because at the time from when I messaged him in February, I had barely gotten any responses from him about okay. the situation. And so I texted both of them to make sure that they got the notification. Okay. And why were you reaching out to him in February? In February of 2021, I reached out to him when I received the sticker that goes on the license plate, the registration. And you asked him to time, take your name off the loan? I asked him to refinance the Jeep in his own name, correct? Right. And how'd that go? It did not. He didn't respond to that. Of course not, because since his credit is bad, he would have to pay more. And if he was willing to do that, he wouldn't have used you the way he used you, right? So that wasn't going to happen. And of course, a bank isn't just going to let you off. Right? Because they got you on the hook. Right. That's that they banked on you being responsible in his place. Right? So, Correct. okay. So now your name is on there for how many years at his mercy? For, as far as I know, I think it's about 20 or 30 years. At that point, I wasn't sure how no, long. No, it's not 20, 30, okay. You really are naive. It's not 20 or 30 years on a car. How long is the loan, Mr. Taylor? Five years. Five years? That's actually longer than I thought it would be. So it's a five year loan. And you're paying how much a, a month on this car? Eight fifty four. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and you can't afford a down payment on it. She's got to give you three fourths of the down payment. But you think an eight hundred and fifty four dollar car note is just peachy for a guy in your position, right? No, it's bad. 
<laughs> okay, so what you're suing for is to get the $3,000 down payment back. Now, he describes a situation, and so do you, because when I ask you, why did you give him $3,000, it's like, well, we were all gonna be together. That's your answer. And I think that once it turned out that you weren't gonna be together, it, you look back on this and you say, maybe this wasn't the best idea, and now you'd like your money back, right? Correct. Yeah, I don't blame you, except for here, how, here is how it goes. I have to find that it is a loan at the time that it's made. If you do it because it's the girlfriend, like, let me use your exact words, it was the girlfriend thing to do, okay? And then it turns out that things didn't work out between you. I guess you're just stuck with the downside of making the decisions that you make, you see? So I can't turn something into a loan, which at the time was a gift. The dispositive issue is, was it a gift or a loan at the time? So if you bought it because you thought you were gonna be together forever, and it turns out that you're not, then too bad, so sad. Your money's gone. It was a bad investment. Verdict for the defendant. So the plaintiff does not get the $3,000 she's after from the defendant. Uh, Mr. Taylor lucks out here. Ms. Ward, let me ask you, what are you thinking right now? To be honest, I'm a little frustrated. Uh, at the, I was trying to explain to her at the time that he made these promises about working it out with me. But, um, you know, if, if, they, if he pointed out and he said that there wasn't anything claimed, then I guess I can't argue with it now. So your name is still on that loan along with his, right? So you're going to be on the hook for that till the end of the, it's a five-year loan. Yeah, I guess so. And where are you? He's in Maine. What state are you in? He's now moved to Jacksonville, Florida. I'm down near Micanopy, Florida. Oh, you're both in Florida. Well, hey, maybe you can go borrow the car that you're making the payments on, you know? I hope so. <laughs> Listen, I'd love to drive it. I feel sorry for you. I feel so. But what a tough lesson to learn. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Taylor, I got to ask you, don't you feel sorry for her in some way? In some way, yes. All right. Well, listen, she's on the hook for it, and uh, maybe you'll let her drive around in the car at some point in the future. It's a, <laughs> it's a very interesting situation. Are you sorry you got her involved in this or not? Yes. It's, it was you a sticky are. situation. Right. Well, good for you at least. All right. Well, amazing situation here, and uh, that's what goes on in court. So thank you very much. I hope you uh, can work it out with her, okay? And that'll bring this case to a close. Doug, how many times have we had cases where money changes from a boyfriend to a girlfriend or vice versa, they break up, and initially it was a gift and suddenly they're arguing it's a loan? The reality is this, once you give somebody something, that's it. You cannot convert a gift to a loan. You can do vice versa, but a gift is a gift forever. Marilyn, if we had met in high school, do you think we would have dated? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I'm not surprised at that. I was very much the disco queen yeah. at the time. I dated boys who right. wore platform shoes and danced right. salsa. I, was, I grew up in Miami. Everyone I knew was Hispanic. Everyone I dated was Hispanic. Right. It was a very different... Um, I wouldn't have dated a long-haired hippie, right. which is and kind you, of what you, you probably, were. You probably didn't listening go to, to Led Zeppelin. You didn't and... go to a lot of tractor pulls, I guess. No, no I tractor like, pulls. Right? All right. Well, you know, I uh, I got to agree with you. We probably would not have dated. Your life was very different when you grew up in the '70s. It was what? What was my life like? Yeah, I was listening to like Led Zeppelin yeah, and uh, you know going to a lot of concerts and that sort of thing. And I was. I wore jeans every day and a t-shirt. Probably the same jeans yeah, that weren't even washed. You totally and... would not have been interested, right. I'm sure. You know, that the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, you can't step in the same river twice, right? So I think I stepped in your river at just the right, right time, time and yep. got swept away, I guess. But it worked out okay.